Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us uh, this afternoon for the next uh, episode of this session. Um, my name is Fali Damanya, and I am the market development manager for Shore South Asia. Um, we thank uh, very much uh, to Mr. Pramod Chandorkar, to Sound Ideas, to the staff here, and um, um, most importantly, to the musicians that have joined us today. So we have Miss uh, Shruti Bhave. Everyone can see you. Hi, Shruti. How are you? And we also have with us uh, Mr. Manish. So today is a very interesting uh, session. Um, it is instruments that sometimes can uh, cause a little bit of stress for engineers and also for uh, for musicians. So we're going to cover uh, acoustic string instruments. Okay, so here we go. So real quickly, this is Shaw's wired mic, uh, here's uh, Shaw's wired mic portfolio. So we have the PG Alta series, the SM series, Beta series, KSM classics, and the Motive digital microphone series. Um, like I always say, um, or any engineer will always tell you, it's always important to find the right microphone because uh, a particular microphone might not necessarily be the best for the application. Um, so choose either dynamic or condenser, but demo it with the instrument to make sure if it, if it will actually work. Frequency response curves for various microphones. So there are flat, you have tailored. So any microphone that has a high pass or a high boost um, are tailored frequency responses. And there are some mics in which you can adjust. So you can have them flat or you can do a high pass or you can do a high boost. So that is an adjustable, adjustable uh, frequency response microphone. Um, in today's session, we'll have a look at violin. So we will start with violin. We will have a look at acoustic guitar, banjo, mandolin, and backpacker. Um, and we also have, I believe, a ukulele for today's, uh, for today's session. Um, part of this exercise is also that we're going to speak to the musicians about the instruments. Um, so I want to know more about violins, about banjos, about tuning for these instruments, about the wood that is used for these instruments, and you know how it can change the sound. And another thing is violin versus viola. Um, they look the same, but they have completely, they have quite different uh, sounds to them. So we'll have a little discussion on that as well. The number of mics that you use, again, this changes for studio or this will change for live. Um, in the studio, you possibly require, you can or you have the accessibility to use more microphones because it is a very uh, controlled environment. But when you go live, you have access to maybe just one at the most, sometimes two microphones. And, um, uh, you know, you need to make that that decision very, uh, very carefully. Proximity of microphones to the instrument. And today, in fact, we'll um, get a very clear indication of uh, proximity effect because of one of the microphones which we are using, uh, which we're using on the violin. And then we'll use it on the mandolin as well. So that's something we will uh, we will check. Construction of the equipment of the instrument is also very important. So is it a wooden body for an acoustic guitar? Is it solo body, um, solid body? Is it hollow body? Um, you know, is it made of wood? Is it made of fiber? Uh, because you do get uh, violins that are actually not even made of wood. They're made of uh, fiber composite. How does that change the sound? Um, uh, very interesting to, to, you know, uh, to know these various facts about these instruments. Um, and last but not least for string instruments is string gauge. Um, you know, thinner strings give you a little thinner sound, but not necessarily because there are guitar players that use extremely thin sounds but get a very large sound from it. But string gauge actually plays a very, very big part in, um, you know, in, um, the, um, in the sound of the instrument. That's something we'll chat about. And as far as recording techniques, we can broadly categorize them into two. First one would be a single mic or a mono recording. Uh, and the second one will, will be like a stereo technique where you can use two microphones in an XY or there are various other, other formats like ORTF is another one. Um, there are various uh, concepts as far as stereo miking. And last but not least, we keep saying this every single time is to when you have more than one microphone, please check for phase.
okay that is very very important um a basic chart like this gives you an example of how the mic is placed and what kind of sound does it actually pick up from the instrument so a very simple uh this is just breaking it down and making it very very simple but for you can replace this guitar with a violin with a sitar with actually any instrument any stringed instrument that you want uh now as you see in the instrument this sound hole or this sound port in the center of the instrument that actually acts like the amplifier for the instrument so it's in different places for different instruments for guitars it is here uh you know the any of these string in instruments requires some form of amplification to actually bring the sound out otherwise you know if it's like listening to a electric guitar so in electric guitar unless you amplify it amplify it there's no real sound okay so violin they also have cutouts uh, various all these string instruments have some sort of a cutout that actually amplifies the sound now if you have the mic in position a okay in position a generally around you know 1 to 1 and a half feet away if you're in the studio okay point it towards the sound hole that's probably the most natural sound that you will possibly get from the instrument uh in uh picture b uh, if you use a mini pickup microphone so like a uh, a uh, uh, lavalier in fact today we are going to be using one of shows uh, twin plex lavaliers for the violin and it's quite interesting to actually hear what the violin sounds like uh, with that microphone uh next is you can do a typical stereo miking in this kind of form both the microphones get a decent natural sound from the instrument and the fact that you pan them gives you a little width to the sound a last technique that's seen on most uh, acoustic guitars is they actually have a mic that is built into the sound hole um it is in fact for everyone to know it is very similar to a podium microphone or similar to a large slightly large diaphragm uh, lavalier microphone it is very very similar to that um and that is the microphone very often if you hear some feedback from acoustic guitars it's because of this uh and that's because uh, you know if you if you have too much low end in the signal that low end can actually cause a decent amount of feedback so that's something you need to be careful of so mono very simple very straightforward technique uh try and place the microphone as you know reasonably close give the sound uh, some place to bloom to actually um to, you know some little resonance that you want to capture from the instrument point it towards the sound hole and it should be pretty pretty straightforward a typical stereo technique will look something like this where you have two microphones you angle them at around 90 degrees there are various angling options so you can do 95 you can do 70 you can do 75 the sound changes slightly but um in principle this is what it is and you leave a little space between the microphone so at least about 20 to 30 cm between the two because the more space that you give um the more um let's say resonance and more natural sound of the uh, instrument that you will capture now Yes the stereo technique is more for studio but um uh, I actually use the stereo technique when we record uh, when we do um um israj for live shows or sitar so we have two microphones uh, that have a little space between each other and we pan one to the left pan one to the right and we just get a much bigger much more natural sound from the from the instrument So this is a typical stereo technique so here you can see it's done with an SM57 in the case here it's done with a KSM137 and this little stereo bar is made by Shure as well so in in case you want to do a stereo mic technique you can have this bar and and just mount two microphones on either side of it um so this is what that looks like and if you're using say for a larger i i know here it, it looks like it's a it's a choir but the same principle will hold if you're uh, using if you're recording in a studio with an orchestra so there is a, a rule that's called the 3 to 1 rule which is basically if you are uh, say 1 uh, foot away from the talent from the musician and you're using two mics the mics need to be spaced by three times so at least 3 feet of distance so as you can see here it says uh 1x so x is the distance so 1x so 1 foot 2 foot 3 feet whatever the distance is and then you leave 3 feet distance between the pairs of microphones 
okay um this serves as one main purpose because it 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 um, alleviates phase related issues when you use multiple microphones in a typical situation like this okay so this is called the 3 to 1 rule definitely be aware of this of this rule and even if you decide to mic like a sitar live in a live show or an israj in a live show the same rule will also uh, come into play <clears throat> so um for today's instruments we are going to be using um the beta uh, 98hc we are going to be using shows twinplex um twinplex for all of you is the is uh, shows offering of a dual diaphragm lavalier microphone now the microphone is really really tiny and we've actually mounted it onto the instrument with a tiny sticky pad so it's actually meant for sticking on to t-shirts it leaves no residue and you can actually uh, apply it and remove it like you know many many times without it losing its uh, stickiness or without losing its um, its uh, or without leaving a residue yeah so we'll be checking out the twinplex the beta 98hc which is this microphone here we also have the pga uh, 181 and our good friend the pga the uh, beta 181 so these are the options if you want a clip on or like a miniature you know smallish kind of microphone and if you want some of the larger microphones then uh, we, what we're using today is the SM27 so that's this microphone here and the other options is the beta 27 KSM32 uh KSM42 and the KSM44 yeah so these are the various options in case you bring it into a studio uh, situation these are some of the pencil condensers that can also be used so the KSM137 which is this first one here the ksm141 the difference between if you see on this there's not much difference you have the same you know uh, pad you have the same high pass the difference is that the 141 you can change the polar pattern okay so it's a swappable polar pattern for the ksm141 uh, uh, whereas the 137 is a is a fixed uh, polar pattern then you have the very old and tried and tested sm81 and again here's the stereo bar that uh, stereo bar that you can use so these are the setups for the microphones that we've used today so as you can see we've got all these microphones in pretty much close proximity the ksm353 ribbon microphone that's at the back here this is being used more as a room mic today um here's the lavalier on the on the mandolin here's the same lavalier on the mandolin so you know this is the it's a pvc jacket with a very thin sticky pad and uh, this sticky pad actually sticks to the instrument but does not it's a very strong sticky pad but does not leave any form of uh, residue yep yeah? and here is something interesting uh, which um, you know this this beta 98 hc is actually meant for horns you know um uh, it's you know trumpet saxophone trombone but it also has a very important um, application and that is for strings so here you can see how we've um, uh, you know uh, clipped it on to this um, this part here and it's a, a, a from uh, uh, it is around a good you know 6 in 6 to 8 inches away from the uh, from the uh, violin from the strings okay um so i'd like to get uh, mr pramod chandorkar in for a little conversation on um on uh, his experience with you know miking of string instruments uh, be it in the studio or when we go uh, when we do live because uh, we've done some events which have had like large string sections and you know uh, uh, we've done a lot of work like that so his experience as a front of house engineer for how to treat these orchestral instruments uh, would be very very valuable so yes over to you uh, pramod hey hey fali how are you very good Hi, very guys. good Hi, nice everyone. nice backdrop today to, today <laughs> yeah uh, so today it's a different thing normally i used to sit next to you so today since i'm traveling and i'm in pune so it's the other way around so you are in the studio and i'm out yeah uh, so it's uh, looks quite interesting uh, the whole setup um, you know uh, for a quick question uh, yeah. on this violin uh, yeah. where you put the clip on microphone mm -hmm. this is the pickup right there's a you can see a phono jack over here 
What's that? Yeah, so that we are not. That is basically a fishman piezo pickup. So that is what exactly. Shruti has yeah. on her violin at the yes. at the moment. Yeah, I just wanted to make it clear, yeah. you know, because it, uh, a lot of audience would have a question that yeah. what have we done there? No, so no, that's, that's a, a that's a pickup, piezo pickup. We are not using. Yeah. We are not using that. Yeah. yeah. What you're hearing is yeah. the what you will hear is the violin just as it is coming through the mm. microphone and as usual there's nothing done EQ or um, or um, uh, processing wise it's all coming to you straight uh, just with a little gain added that's yeah. it. Yeah, great. Uh, Fali, I would like you to uh, tell a little bit more about the dual diaphragm uh, triplex uh, yeah. microphone yeah. because it seems quite interesting. Is it like the uh, it having the two diaphragms and uh, the proximity effect, uh, does it work on that uh, principle? No, you know, it's different because these are actually omnidirectional microphones and they are meant for um, uh, for corporate, for speeches, for, uh, you know, you can, you, you do use them. We see a lot of people using them for singing as well. The benefit mm -hmm. of the dual diaphragm is that when you, the pickup area is much wider. So even if you have it clipped to your t-shirt and you actually move from side to side, uh, you don't get any form of audio, you know, lowering of audio coming through the microphone. Now, this was the okay. same microphone that you were using in the last two sessions on your lavalier. Yeah. So this is the same okay. microphone that... We, so that is obviously one application for it. And the other application mm -hmm. for it, which we find getting a lot of prominence is uh, for the uh, for string instruments, in fact. And because it comes with certain mounts which you can use on on string instruments. Yeah, uh, with our uh, with our past experience doing uh, uh, string orchestras on uh, live tour. Yeah. Uh, if you remember, uh, we used to use a lot of uh, close. You know, the, the choice always remains that we like uh, the microphone to be really close to the string instrument yes. so that uh, in terms of gain staging, we gain really staging. don't have to exactly. go uh, exactly. bizarre on. Exactly. Right. Since it's a soft instrument and we don't expect the uh, uh, musician to really play it hard. Yeah. And again, especially with a, you know, like we had a 50 piece band or something like that, when, with that, when you have 10 violins, they really are very soft in terms of how they are going to be. Uh, the audio level is very soft if you look at the original acoustic level exactly. compared to a drum kit sitting next to it or a horn section there. Oh, the whole PA standing right in front Correct. of you. Exactly. So, you know, that was quite challenging if you remember. Yeah. Like, we always tried to get the best sound out of the... Uh, out of the uh, instrument. Section. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, like, in a studio, I would always prefer to have a decatory kind of a thing. Set up, where, yeah. Because uh, ambient setup uh, required in a studio and to get the right sound of the section. Correct. When Correct. you say strings, a solo violin is a different thing. Exactly. And when you have... Uh, a group of strings playing together. Yeah. So the combined uh, sound effect. of that whole section uh, effect comes only through a, a room miking or overhead miking. It, uh, it cannot, uh, it won't sound uh, uh, well mixed into each other. Exactly. Uh, if you are just doing the uh, small level ear microphones on, on all the instruments. Correct. But then you have to add some, but for live, uh, you know, if you remember at times we had tried to use uh, a couple of overhead on the section and also yeah. having the spot mic. So we used to treat exactly. the spot mics as well as have a combination of the overhead and the spot mic. Correct. Uh, but again, you will have to be very clear. I remember I had done an uh, orchestra uh, show with uh, the whole 50-60 piece orchestra in Pune uh, back in 2006. Okay. Uh, and uh, it was uh, for the uh, Pancham uh, uh, magic show. Like where they, they used a tribute to Panchanda, the whole orchestra. So that's the time I had actually, uh, what we had used the technique is, we had isolated the whole string section. Okay. So we had put the whole flexi. string section under a uh, flexi boot. Yeah. And on that flexi boot, I had put up uh, these uh, uh, overhead microphones. Correct. And even Correct. the PZM, I had, I had used the PZM Correct. microphone. Correct. So there was no spot microphone. Correct. There was just the overhead microphones. Overhead and, microphones. Uh, over it. But we tried to isolate that whole string section as from the other possible. noises. Yeah. yeah. But at times, you know, in terms of production, you have a lot of challenges for that. So, you Correct. know, lights, they get Correct. started working <laughs> on that. It does not look good. So, later on, you remember when we were traveling all over with the world tour on that, we always, we never isolated the uh, string section, but we did isolate the drummer. 
Correct. Uh, exactly. So we used exactly. to isolate the drummer exactly. so that that does not bleed into this. Bleed and into the mics. Yeah. Again, stage layouting was very important. If you remember, yeah. we used to always keep the strings uh, far softer away. part towards yeah. the left, yeah. far away from the loud instruments, yeah. and again back in the on the stage Correct. so that where they are uh, uh, isolated a little uh, bit from the PA system also. PA system yeah. also, yeah. or else you know, then you have a lot of challenges for getting the right gain. Right. And tonality wise, you know, we had a lot of uh, issues. If you remember, we first had those uh, body microphones, yeah. some of the, but that that used to really change the yeah. uh, complete tone of yeah. the instrument. Because that's Though that's meant, uh, uh, yeah. like um, uh, you know, that's those are meant for capturing the resonance of the instrument. So you're capturing the vibration exactly. of the wood. You're not actually capturing right. what the strings are are doing. So or the whole body sound. Yeah, so it sounds doesn't sound. sound very real. That's the that's the Correct. issue there. So so um, I'm really excited to hear this uh, twin plex on the violin and uh, how how would it come? Awesome, awesome. Uh, Fali, someone is saying that uh, Durgesh is saying that your voice needs to come up. Okay, I I will talk louder. I'm very soft spoken. <laughs> I'll talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's it, Fali. So you can cool. Can take it awesome, awesome. So, everyone, uh, today we have with us uh, Miss uh, Shruti Bhave. Hi, Shruti. How are you? Yep. Uh, Mike How, is, are you? Uh, yeah, muted, muted. How are you? I am good. I think awesome. It's really good to be uh, back in studio and initiating something like this. So yeah. unique. Yeah. I'm so yep. thankful to you. Awesome. Me. Thank you so much for this. <laughs> awesome. 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 So uh, guys, what we'll do first is I want to have a little uh, conversation with uh, Shruti about, um, about the instrument. Okay. So, you know, I want to know basically, um, tell us something more about the violin. What kind of, you know, woods are they made from? What can, how can the sound change like from a viola? To a uh, to a violin, uh, you know how is it? Uh, what I what is a how or how is a viola made that the sound is different from a violin? Uh, what kind of strings are you using? What is the gauge of the strings? Uh, you know various things uh, things like that. Tell us about the violin. Sure. First things first. I'll just talk about uh, the make that the viola and violins all are made basically from the wood like maple and spruce. Basically, when it like. Uh, not in India, it's like also fiber mixed with some local wood or something. But well, uh, India has never been a primary maker of uh, an instrument like violin, which has always been made in Italy or German makes, as you say, Stradivari or cool. Yeah. So, so the primary difference of the, wall, the, the sound that uh, both of the instruments like viola and violin and basically the whole violin family of cello and the double bass, it's the volume, the, the size and uh, the kind of strings it's the combination of the make the bodies and the strings the gauge as you said um, so i would not i would want to know what gauge i'm using exactly but for violin i definitely use the violin set which is the gda string uh, uh, standard strings which are tuned to gda but uh, as i have an indian classical music background i also tune it to the indian tuning which is uh, Sapa Sapa in like which is like D A D A or A D A D for that matter or right. anything in the perf not in the perfect fifth as we right. traditionally do in the Western classical violin tuning. Okay. And for viola, uh, it it's a one range lower. Like you when you have G D A E for violin strings, it's C G D A for viola. So that's just one range lower. A little one range lower is cello, cello, and the double bass is even more okay. one range lower to that. So this is how it is and for I have uh, what I have done is I have another violin itself it's not a viola 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 is like a a couple of inches taller than violin in the, the height okay. and uh, also for obvious reasons because it has longer strings which are give you deeper sound and they are thicker with the coiling and uh, okay. but I have coiled viola strings on the violin <laughs> so it's it's a little heavy for that little baby but <laughs> it's doing quite well for me so cool yeah. awesome uh, awesome yeah. very very good to know yeah. uh, could you just uh, touch up once more on the tuning sure. of the instruments sure now I have uh, tuned my violin to GD uh, GD GD right uh, because it is the the sapper sapper in the Indian music that you can say it right. like uh, the open strings that I have used because that allows me to play only in one scale and uh, but uh, the way in the Western violin is tuned it is basically a provision to 
play the violin in different scales and that's that's how it is like guitar like the piano even the violin has that provision in the gdae tuning which is the perfect fifth tuning it has the provision of uh, with provision with ability i must say right. <laughs> that uh, the one one can play in all the scales possible which right. is definitely not possible with that proficiency in the indian tuning but then indian tuning has its uh, plus points of uh, uh, to be able to generate indian melodies which are more glides and meads and gamaks so the indian tuning enables uh, to play Uh, no, the, the, the tuning enables to play them more better, you know, better in a better way. So right, yeah, right. So awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you <laughs> very much. So tell us, what are we going to be listening to first? Ah, okay. I'll just play a song that you. Uh, I'm playing an Indian Bollywood song. Okay. <laughs> and I think I, I'm sure everybody knows it. So I'll just play awesome, around. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Yeah. Cool. Cool. So guys uh, what are we going to listen to first will be the PGA 181 which is dead center the black microphone and then to the left of that microphone is the SM27 which is the um, the large diaphragm condenser and to the right of that is a little silver looking mic that is the beta 181 or beta 181 and then back of the room about 3 uh, or 4 feet away is the large diaphragm ribbon microphone so that is the KSM 353 and after that we'll actually switch to the uh, beta 98 which is on the which is uh, on the violin so take it away shruti so good so guys now we're going to switch to the sm27 so good i could listen to that all day <laughs> okay so can we have another small bit with the sm27 sure yeah so you can play maybe the same piece i'll just change the microphone So guys I saw that there were some questions here um I can take some of those the first one I believe was about the beta beta 98 um so yeah uh, the beta 98 you can use on pretty much uh, it's uh, on horns to strings to you know double bass um anywhere where you can fit that uh, uh, where anywhere where you can clip on and fit the microphone it actually is a is a great sounding microphone um so many many applications for it um a question i saw also was about um microphone techniques for like a large string section um so pramod you should take that one so you have a 16 violin setup for a live sound mic uh, technique uh, yes you, we spoke about that how would you uh, adjust what would you do for a studio recording of 16 violins uh for studio recording for 16 i would definitely not want to do a spot miking in terms of uh, miking the each violin uh, i would take uh, i would, for 16 violins i would put maybe uh, a decatree maybe three three microphones uh, in a decatree formation of the triangle 
uh, and uh, on the overhead almost uh, uh, five feet above the head of uh, you actually to record a good swing section you need a good high tech uh, room uh, normally in today's time you have studios with nine feet height or something at, as the maximum actually uh, even as as higher as the mic you can put on a uh, will always give you a better sound but if you have a good room with uh, a good 12 13 feet clear height a microphone at around 9 10 feet uh, and a good take a three combination of three uh, microphones for 16 strings will be really good so awesome. i would always recommend that uh, uh, for the studio and then for live uh, as you know we would do spot micings and add a overhead pair of a microphone and mix uh, blend in blend the overhead it. into the thing and get the right yeah. perfect so that's what i would do awesome awesome so here's a question for Shruti actually. Um, so there is a question here about temperature in auditoriums and how does that affect the tuning of your instruments? <laughs> it definitely does, of course. And uh, it uh, usually turns sharper when it is like colder and it gets flatter and when it is like warmer. warmer. So so once we step up, uh, step it into the auditorium sort of studio like this here again. So we just make sure that we accustomize our instruments to that climate so right. that it kind of settles and gives a better result and it doesn't like right. mess around <laughs> with it. Yeah. Cool, cool. Awesome. So guys, we're going to listen to the second violin and now we're going to listen to it with the SM27. Yeah. So as this is a viola range on the violin, as I had mentioned, I'll just demonstrate something which sounds like a viola. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Awesome. So good. So good. So good. So Vali, good. Uh, Vali, yeah. uh, if, if you allow me, yeah. uh, can you maybe do one part uh, where she can play without the reverb? Yep, sure. We'll cut the reverb and we'll yeah. switch to the next mic. Yeah. So this is the Beta 181, but yeah. this time without reverb. Yeah, this SM27 was sounding awesome, man. Yeah. The thing is, we we did. Uh, Kitu came and asked me, uh, do you think we require some uh, reverb? And I was like, no, no, it's just a mic demo. And then I realized if it's strings, someone is going to ask us, can we hear it with reverb? So I said, okay, let's just prepare what reverb and keep it. So actually, so, someone asked us, can you turn off the reverb? Turn off the <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah. So we can actually know the sound of the, uh, like without getting emotional and getting flown into what she's playing. Let's hear to the microphone. Cool, cool. So now we're going to switch to the Beta 181, which is the little silverish looking microphone in the, in the side. That was the 181 without reverb. It sounds awesome. Reverb. 
Sounds great. We, uh, the yeah. first microphone, Fali, can you tell which was the first one we used? Or? The first one the we first tried was the PGA 181, the one in the center, the black microphone mm-hmm. in the center. Mm-hmm. So it was that. So, and the now, second was the SM27 to the left and then the Beta 181 to the right. And now we'll actually listen to the Twinplex. Let's see what that sounds like. Yeah, are we are we having the room mic on during all these things? Not, not yet. We haven't turned on the room mic yet. So okay. this was just the okay. instrument as it is. Yeah. So... Let's check the same, maybe the same piece out, and this time we'll listen to it with the twinplex. And shall we have reverb on or reverb off? Keep it off, I think. Keep okay. it off. Okay, cool. Done. So this is twinplex. Let's hear this. Awesome. This this sounds awesome. Super. You know, if you notice, uh, you know, with the with the Swingplex, you really get the Boeing sound to the. Yeah. You can yeah. hear the grains. Yeah, and it's right behind. So if you look at the violin, there's a little white dot behind the bridge. So that's where the microphone is. So it's placed right over there. Ah. Uh, yeah. So the bridge is, is, you can see the bridge and then right behind that is a small white uh, dot and the white dot is actually yeah, the, yeah. it's the housing for the Twinplex. So it sits in that. Yeah. It, it's, it's sounding really cool, natural like with this. Yeah. And I'm sure like when, once we add a, uh, let's start with maybe adding the ribbon mic with this. Yeah. And okay, just let's it do and that. Balance it yeah. 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 Okay. So guys, what we're going to listen to now is the Twinplex with the 353 ribbon microphone both together. So this is what you were listening to was um, about 50% Twinplex and uh, about 80% odd the room mic was uh, was this session. So you can, you actually hear more of the resonance of the, and the trail, the resonance trail of the, of the violin. Um, awesome. Shruti, shall we just listen to the Beta 98 on the other violin sure. once? Sure. sure. Awesome. Until then, let's check if we have some questions. So one of the questions is from, um, uh, so this question says, yes, we spoke about the three feet rule. Um, and But when in the picture, the two of the microphones are very close to each other and they are in XY. So how can we say that the three feet stay um, with, that the three feet distance is maintained when the mics are so close in, in XY? Pramod, do you want to take that? We did a 1 is to 3, right? We yeah. always maintained the 1 is to 3. Yeah. 1 is to 3 ratio. Yeah. So definitely, look, with the, uh, you know, in terms of stereo micing, when you when you say you're micing a guitar stereo, and you, as it is, if you see the instrument itself is so close, so you are definitely, when if you're putting 3 feet apart and at a distance, it's not going to give you, uh, the, the SPL of the instrument itself is not that huge that it's going to reach there. So whatever stereo placing you get, you know, very frankly, Fali, I would never want to do it hard pan left and hard pan right to uh, with those uh, microphones so close because with these kind of instruments, like if I have a string section, I am obviously I will do a hard left right pan to get the whole room kind of a thing. Exactly. But with guitar, we'll do a ba- basic uh, maybe uh, uh, 45 degree panning or less than that also. Right. So uh, anyway, you're not going to get too much of great separation in terms of if you place the mic as your as per your C figure 
so because the sound itself is there and it won't sound natural when you do a exactly complete left complete to right hard pan yes yes yeah. so it's uh, so beethoven if you see this picture in picture number 3 where the two microphones are placed now just it just goes to from the point of view of if you want the least amount of uh, phase interplay between the two microphones uh, whatever distance you place it away from the instrument and if you're using two microphones just leave about three times that distance of a gap now when we use the xy technique which is like this in any case we are going to be panning maybe 100 100 maybe 50% left 50% right so the thing is of when it comes to phase it's less noticeable when you pan in any case so if you take two signals uh, some even which may be completely out of phase and you pan one left and you pan the other right you the first thing you will lose uh, when they are in mono is they should completely almost com- cancel each other out completely but when you actually move them into stereo you will actually get a little ambience coming through from those microphones so the only the reason to to leave this this space is so that each microphone what each microphone captures does not interplay so much phase wise with the other microphone i i hope that was uh, that was clear okay um let's see if there are any other questions um okay so what about uh, acoustic sitar you know we really really wanted to do acoustic sitar today we just could not find anyone because most of the sitar players we know are not in mumbai at the moment so we had we had contacted quite a few but we were just not able to find a sitar player but maybe that's a session we can do you know once um, either asad bhai or someone comes back we can probably do an yeah, acoustic but, sitar uh, you know, session uh, fully i would like to add you know uh, when when we are doing the even with the same kind of miking technique for sitar you know the biggest challenge for the miking the sitar is the resonance of the uh, whole set of uh, strings it has behind correct. at the back end correct. of the thing exactly. so you know that's a resonating thing uh, which is so but i'll tell you no engineer can have any solution for that that's yeah. a part of that sound of and sound. it's up to the musician how control much it. he is going to control it so you know a lot of times we face these things like people say that you know there is a lot of resonance because <laughs> when it's amplified it really comes out uh, in a huge way Correct. so you know like the musician you have to communicate with the musician and make him understand and he has a way to control it even with israel if you remember or a sarangi exactly. exactly. used to always uh, do exactly. that for exactly. the sarangi you know the amount of resonance it has yes. so you can maybe we are, at times i remember we had used the moonjel on right. a sarangi yes uh, the moonjel from the percussionist yeah. we took that and we put it on his resonance sata uh, <laughs> resonance strings yeah. and it really controlled the whole resonance so Absolutely. you know that's the main challenge with yeah. sitar and with sitar. sarangi and the thing is to imp- the important thing is to remember that that is the sound of the instrument so it is you know uh, you can't add like a dso and just remove that part or you can't add a multi van compressor and just remove that part because then it starts sounding very unnatural it's not natural so a lot of that control of the high part of the sitar sarangi israj also for that matter that control comes from the musician um you know and it's it's um, uh, i do a lot of work with uh, asad khan who plays with uh, mr ar rahman and we never have a problem as far as you know the highs being too sharp or too loud because it's that control that is there uh from it you know so, even the instrument as i'll tell you as the instrument the quality of the instrument quality also of the matters instrument. Yeah. that really takes you out yeah. and yeah. Um, you can't do anything with the miking technique on that yeah. you yeah. have to work with the instrument you have to work with the instrument absolutely absolutely i in fact the reason i really wanted the sitar over here is because asad bhai has been after me can you please try this twin plex on my sitar and when were we uh, when we were about to try it the lockdown happened so we've been sitting here so i really wanted a sitar player for this but we'll we'll definitely that's something that's definitely on my mind to do another session but maybe we can do it with sitar with israj with you know those kind of uh, instruments yeah, also yeah awesome awesome let's uh, uh, now listen to the beat on 98 there you go
Superb. So that's the Beta 98HC microphone. So it's actually me- it's actually meant for uh, horns. It's meant for um, uh, you know saxophone, trumpet, all that kind of instruments. But uh, you know we have a lot of people using them on violin as uh, as well. And one primary difference I'd say between the uh, Twinplex and the Beta 98, uh, apart from the fact that the Twinplex is tiny, the Twinplex is omnidirectional. Um, so if you're doing only an orchestral setup, it might be the best option to use omnidirectional because you actually capture a very, very natural sound from the instrument. But if you're performing with drums with a loud band, then the Beta 98 HC makes more sense because it is super cardioid. So you reject a lot of uh, ambience around the, the musician. So just be aware of, again, like we always say, read the manual, be aware of the, the polar patterns of the mic and then choose a mic uh, accordingly. Um, so, Shruti, let's hear one small bit more and maybe this time we'll turn on a little uh, reverb and listen to a violin <laughs> in full reverb glory. Sure. And then we'll get in Mr. Manish and we'll check out the acoustic, uh, other instruments that he's brought with him. Superb, superb, awesome. So guys, for everyone's uh, information, Shruti has an awesome YouTube page, has an awesome Instagram page. (laughs) Shruti Bhave, please follow her and she puts up videos very often and those videos sound awesome. So thanks, Pali. No problem. Thank you very much, uh, Shruti. And uh, guys, uh, uh, you know, we, we really like to do these sessions because we don't, you know, on a regular work day, we don't get time to do this. We don't get time to just listen to microphones and, you know, listen to great musicians play. So I'm like, uh, I, this is probably the first time I'm doing this, sitting in a studio and listening to a <laughs> violin. So I'm I'm really, really Thank you so much this. for this experience. I'm having a great time. You know, it's, awesome. It's so awesome. informative for me as well as a musician. It's a lot of upgrade. Cool. If at all, I can take something from it. <laughs> cool, cool. Lovely yes. to have you. Lovely to have you, thanks, Shruti. Thanks, Fali. Thank you. Okay. All right, guys, we'll now switch to uh, the acoustic guitar and uh, mandolin. Until then, we have a lot of questions. So we'll uh, go ahead and take those questions. <coughs> Excuse me. So, yeah, Rohit has a question about uh, the setup that we are using. So um, basically, it's uh, uh, Pramod's super fine um, SSL G4000, G plus 4000 console. So it's coming into the console, there's a little gain, and then a mono output from that is coming to my Focusrite 2i2. And um, this microphone that I'm talking to is also going into the 2i2, and that is coming out onto Zoom. Um, uh, For Zoom, we're actually going to be doing a session very soon on how to get the best audio out of your Zoom session. Uh, because mo- a lot of people have now been doing streaming from home and Zoom is one of the nicer sounding platforms to actually uh, to actually steam- stream when you want to do this kind of a webinar kind of session. Okay, so that's what it is. It's the console. Um, console out is going to, all the channels are going to one bus. They are coming into the uh, Focusrite sound card and then that is coming into Zoom. It's coming into OBS and then OBS into Zoom. Um, uh, Pali, it's the first yeah. time actually I am I am on the other side. Yeah. Uh, normally I'm sitting next to you. Yeah. It's sounding awesome out here. Yeah. Even yeah. if it's like uh, and we discussed it earlier also. You know the mono uh, zoom gives you mono out. Yeah. But uh, you know in, it's fun to hear uh, this uh, with the reverb also in yeah. mono. It's really sounding. Yeah. 
Beautiful. Yeah, that's the that's the whole thing with Zoom. It uh, it sums down to mono. So you have to just be aware of that. You can't have stereo too many stereo elements because it will just collapse to mono. So just be careful about that. So yeah, Durgesh. Towards the end, we listened to the Twinplex and the Room Mic. That was um, just before we finished the Beta ninety eight. Um, thanks, uh, Moen. Uh, I hope you like these uh, microphones and these sessions we do. Is there any equalizing? There's no equalizing whatsoever. There is only gain added. And uh, all the condenser mics, the first three have kind of the same gain. The ribbon mic has a little more because the, it is a low sensitivity mic. You need to push up a little more gain. And the Twinplex and the Beta 98 are actually going through wireless packs uh, because I did not have... Um, I did not have um, the adapters to plug them into directly into XLR. So I'm actually running them through um, uh, uh, a wireless uh, body pack, basically. That's what that's what you're listening to it through. So no EQ, no processing. Uh, what pre's and converters? The pre's are the SSL stuff. And actually, it does not make a difference because, yeah, it makes a difference coming into the SSL, but finally, it's still coming out through a focus, right? So basically... Possibly whatever the fo the SSL is doing, the focus right is not doing. So it's like uh, you know, it's it's. Uh, they're well, balancing it out. They're balancing it out. The nice things done by the SSL are getting cancelled by the focus right. So. <laughs> or rather, we can say actually, focus right is sounding really good. <laughs> cool. Yep. Okay. Um, uh, so Zane has a question. Wouldn't the use of a contact mic like a like a Twinplex bring out specific instrument too much in an orchestral environment? See, firstly, Zane, it's not a contact mic. So it is a standard lavalier microphone. It is um, what, you know, corporates use on their um, ties to speak to the audience. So that's actually what it is. It's a lav. But it's a very, very high quality lavalier. And the thing with having it that close to the instrument is that the gain of the microphone can actually come way down. And now if you have like say 16 musicians with the same uh, microphone, uh, you don't need to, I think the mistake uh, that happens usually when you have an orchestra is adding too much gain because you listen to one instrument at a time. Uh, whereas you need to mostly, at least that's what I do, but Pramod can tell us also is bring up all the faders and kind of bring them up at unity first and listen to the entire thing together because that's the whole thing you right. need to listen to the session as a session and uh, not but as I, I one believe, microphone i believe what is with an orchestral content context when he's asking uh, i i would not be very uh, uh, like if i'm doing an orchestra i would not want to use any close microphones as yeah. i said yeah. In, yeah specifically with the western orchestra yeah. you could thing. you'd probably I use the close micing maybe the, on the soloist the one or two soloists exactly. might get the close mic. Who's going to play a solo? Exactly. So, like exactly. I, when I did the Birmingham Symphony Orchestra ATP, we did live with uh, Sonu Nigam. Yeah. Uh, there was not a single uh, uh, close microphone. Everything yeah. was ambient. Uh, yeah. So, uh, over, and yes, what he means, uh, he mentioned contact mic, but even with the twin plex, it's uh, as you heard, it will give a lot of Boeing sound. Yeah. So then, then uh, you might tend to use a EQ to reduce the Boeing sound. So that's not the solution. Yeah. Uh, actually, the right thing is, as you also mentioned, that with so many close mics, you really uh, put the gains really low and right. you get a better signal-to-noise ratio. Uh, exactly. And, exactly. Uh, that really exactly. works in live scenario. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, there's a question here from Viraj and he wants to know what gel we have used to put the Twinplex. So, so basically with the Twinplex, the kit, you get this um, strip of uh, double-sided tape kind of thing. Um, so basically, this is used and there is also what's called, uh, uh, it's a PVC mounting. It all comes with the Twinplex accessories, part of the accessories. So with that, you just stick one side of it to the PVC part and the other side of it to the instrument. And the, the best part about it is that it does not leave residue. Uh, I know most uh, musicians are petrified of us sticking stuff to their instruments and then that residue does not come out or the glue does not come out. But yeah, this does not leave any form of remember, uh, residue at all. Uh, Fali, uh, We've had Fali, fights about this. Canada, and you remember in Canada for the first time, we had gone to the 7-Eleven or some, some staple store and yeah. we bought out some yeah. uh, small sticky things and we used yeah. it. Yeah. You know, things work. Yeah. <laughs> you have to figure out how, you have how, to, figure to, out how to do it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the... <laughs> yeah. See, the thing is, with musicians, 
the instrument is your pride and joy and you've you know you the last thing you want is a sound engineer coming and damaging it because there's some glue which will not come out from the instrument so just be just be a little uh, cautious and little aware aware of that okay um so is manish ready yes manish is ready um <clears throat> Okay, we'll just take one more question. There's a question about uh, microphone technique for Santur. Uh, uh, Santur, again, a lot of resonance, and I feel um, we uh, what I used to uh, how I would love to mic is in two microphones, like one towards the uh, for the higher part, it's like the front part of the Santur, and one towards the lower part. So, and we can also uh, do a stereo miking at a height. At a height, if we do that, at a height, uh, yeah. say around two feet, three feet away from the microphone, uh, from the instrument, and uh, two close microphones, where we, uh, I think the SM eighty one, or if you have yeah. a larger diaphragm microphone, yeah. even yeah. Uh, one microphone at the center, center. will give a very nice sound. Will do the job exactly, exactly. exactly. Cool, Mr. Manish, how are you? Hi, I'm I'm fine. How are you? Very good, very good, very good. Manish, why? Thank you very much. आज आने के लिए मनीष इज एन एक्सलेंट बेस गिटार प्लेयर आल्सो आप बेस भी बजाते राइट या या थैंक यू फली सबसे पहले और फली और प्रमोद जी को थैंक यू आज एक्चुअली इस लॉकडाउन में शायद तीन महीने बाद मैं माइक्रोफोन के सामने पहली बार बैठा हूँ और वो भी इतने सारे और इतने अच्छे माइक्रोफोन के सामने पहली बार बैठा हूँ Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, so, guys, let's uh, hear the acoustic guitar with the. Um, let's start again with the PGA one eighty one, and Manish will go through small sections of you know just picking and then strumming, so you can get a feel of of uh, what both sound like. We'll switch to the SM twenty seven. to the beta 181 We'll switch to the room mic. Awesome, 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 awesome. So we just went through all the four microphones there. So the PGA one eighty one, then the twenty seven, the Beta one eighty one, and then the KSM three five three. So I I definitely noticed subtle differences between 
between all all four of them the room mic obviously gives you a, um a, a, a quite a retro sounding you know it's a very typical ribbon microphone sound actually from it awesome um manish bhai shall we check um, um shall we check mandolin yeah sure okay now on the mandolin again we have all the microphones but we will also be what we've done is we put the twin plex on the mandolin so we'll have a quick listen at that as well okay so actually let's start with the sm27 switch to the twin plex switch to the PGA 181 we'll add the twin plex along with the room mic now back to the sm27 Awesome, Manish Bhai. Superb. <clears throat> so, that uh, SM27 with the twin plex was sounding yeah, something yeah. different altogether. Yeah. Nice, nice, uh, nice, uh, nice vibe. I think this SM27 suits the string instruments. It was sounding really nice with the yeah, yeah. Uh, with the violin also. Awesome. Even even the uh, with the ribbon ribbon and yeah. the twin plex, it was a yeah, yeah. very nice combination. Killer, killer. Um, so, the, uh, Manish, why next? What check? Are we doing? Banjo. Come on. So, there is one uh, question here, which is, um, what? How would you mic a nylon string guitar? Um, would you mic it the same way as a steel string guitar? Pretty much, yes. I mean, there's not much different. And to just to see, um, uh, Manish actually has a nylon string uh, ukulele. so he'll actually be playing that uh, next after he finishes the banjo he'll switch to uh, switch to that but i think one thing even, I, uh, uh, you, you know the string itself makes a difference in the sound yeah. so microphone you don't need to change it the strings are the uh, material of the string itself is making the difference exactly so exactly we don't need to again change the microphone for exactly that. exactly exactly so um now i want to know few things because this, the banjo um i had not much experience working with a banjo so the first time i interacted it it can be a little little tricky manish bhai ye banjo kaise banta hai what exactly wo wo drum jo shell hai uska mm-hmm. to wo main uska um, wo exactly thoda describe karenge banjo kaise uh, banta hai yes uh, ye jo drum skin laga hua hai ye drum skin hi hai 
ड्रम स्किन की वजह से इसका रेजोनेंस और इसका टोनल क्वालिटी जो है वो टोटल अलग आता है क्योंकि बाकी जो इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स है जैसे गिटार है मैंडलिन है यूके लिली हो या गिटार लिली सबका टॉप जो होता है ये जो टॉप ये वुडन होता है तो इसमें ये ड्रम हेड होने की वजह से इसका साउंड डिफरेंट आता है इसमें भी अलग अलग इसके आते हैं फोर स्ट्रिंग बेंजो आता है फाइव स्ट्रिंग आता है ये सिक्स स्ट्रिंग बेंजो है जो कि जिसे गिटार बेंजो भी कह सकते हैं या टेनर बेंजो कहते हैं इसको टेनर बेंजो और ये वो ड्रम का जो शेल है उसका वो साइज भी अलग हो सकता है हाँ अलग इसका, अलग हाँ इसका साइज अलग अलग होता है इसमें इवन जैसे ये प्लास्टिक हेड वाला है तो नॉर्मल स्किन वाला नून वो सब स्किन भी आते हैं okay. जैसे कि अपने ड्रम हेड में आते हैं वैसे ही okay so guys that's just the similar thing that we said like you know all these instruments they require something to amplify the sound otherwise it becomes like a bass guitar or an electric guitar so in the case of the banjo the drum shell and the skin plays a very large part in the amplification of the sound okay let's listen to banjo and now we'll listen to it first on the sm27 <laughs> to the PGA 181 Now to the Beta 181 to the room mic the main thing to remember with the banjo i feel is that it sounds very honky but it is that is the sound of the wo instrument ka sound hai na wo se ha wo agar strings ko loud uh, loud string, sound hai uska thoda loud aur wo uh, drum ka skin jo hai ha usko thoda tap kar sakte hai ha yeah so that is basically the fiber of the of the drum head basically ha Yes. Uh, it's almost like a piccolo snare, and on top of that, you have put strings. Yes, yes. So that right. is basically the design of the banjo, basically. So we we'll listen to it once more with the SM27, and then we'll switch over to the nylon string ukulele. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, thank you very much, Manish Bai. Thank you. Or now, uh, ukulele, we'll see. Huh? Yes. Sir. Ukulele pe nylon string hai na? Huh. Okay. So uh, I guess this will answer the question of um, would you mic a nylon string slightly different? Maybe not the miking, but how you would treat the nylon string guitar versus the uh, steel string guitar. That would change uh, change a little bit. So uh, now, basically, what all we're going to do is the mics. Everything is in the same position, and we're just going to replace the other instruments now with a nylon string ukulele. So let's again start from the top. PGA one eighty one. Switch 
to the SM27. Now to the Beta 181. Now the room mic. And now back to the PGA 181. back to the SM27. Awesome. Say it, Vanish White. Do it. Hey, thank you. Very, very nice. Very nice. So, yeah, I think Actually, that's... Uh, yes. All the... Uh, um, uh, SM27 is a winner for me. Actually, for this one, yeah, I, I think so. Want to the yeah. the percussion yeah. stuff, I thought the PGA 181 did really well, but for today, I'm yeah. finding a uh, nice competition from the SM SM uh, 27 also. 27. <laughs> yeah, and and uh, as I said, that Manish Manish is a fab musician, and you can put any any string into his hand, and even if you give him a single string, and he'll make music out of it. So <laughs> thank you, Manish. Uh, thank you, Pramodji. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much, you, Manish. Thank, thank you. you thank you very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys. So that's uh, it as far as our demo for today. Uh, I know the last three sessions were all about uh, drums and percussion. So today we have something melodic, which was uh, uh, good fun. Somebody is asking, uh, please say something about the cello. Oh. Uh, you know, the cello, cello basically... Uh, what I would, what we have done is normally it's a, it's a low instrument. Like you won't say not as low as a double pass, but a, a lower string instrument. So uh, we have tried using several times a nice condenser microphone on it. Uh, we, I think SM twenty seven will uh, yeah. be a great. We used to use the SM eighty one. I remember for when SM81 we used to do uh, the Sonu Nigam shows. We used to have SM eighty one on it. Yeah. SM eighty one also, <coughs> but. Uh, uh, there's nothing much because it's a similar kind of a string instrument with a larger body and a huge sound. Um, actually, the challenge we face is in the double bass. Uh, right. If he's trying to cover the whole string zone. Right. Double bass being really low. You know, we can, uh, with a double bass, we can use the uh, kick microphones we have used at times. Uh, you know, that really gives a nice uh, yeah. low end because, you know, we have a bump at 80, uh, at 80 hertz on a kick exactly. microphone, exactly. the PG. Exactly. Uh, and the uh, exactly. beta series. So, you know, that really works well. Right? So. Yeah. so, Viraj has an interesting observation that maybe the Twinplex can be used with the Bulbul instrument. Yeah, I think, sure. It should be tried and it will... I'm sure it will I want to actually good. try it with a lot of musicians that we've not, uh, that we've not tried yet. So, uh, you know, at some point, definitely the thing is to, you know, bring some awareness also to local instruments and local yeah. you know musicians which you know don't yeah. get to be seen as much or you, we don't have Focused. that much idea yeah. Fo you don't have focus we don't have any idea about those musicians yeah. and about those instruments actually also so uh, definitely it is on the cards and once we can travel a little more uh, easily is when we can try and get them down to mumbai to the same yep. to promote lovely studio and uh, well, we know, can actually, have more we sessions do like we should do a tour as we had discussed earlier we yep. should do a tour and go to their local places and just carry our microphones. And just Lovely. Yep. Yep. Of course. Not, of in, course, a, not in a not in a controlled studio. Do it open right. air. Let's right. see. Right. Right. Good right. Fun. right. Right. Awesome. 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 So, uh, thank you everyone for joining us uh, today. Um, uh, Fali, one yeah. sec. Uh, someone is asking, can you suggest for a live show which mic you can suggest for acoustic guitar? Uh, you take this. Uh, 
what would you want to give a recommendation um yeah you know phone is asking this yeah <laughs> acoustic guitar pretty much uh, there are so many options see the thing is for live try and not keep it to very sensitive microphone so uh, firstly actually if your acoustic guitar has a piezo out please use that but if it does not have that and you know very often we go to college circuit and uh, you know before the main band we have the college band playing and there's no piezo pickup and then you have to put a microphone so very often i advise to just use an uh, use an sm81 actually so and if they don't have spare sm81 we take it out from the overhead microphones from the overheads of the drums and we just use it for that um and you know then put it back after we have finished but uh, you know everything from a 58 to a sm81 to any of the mics that you saw today any of those mics uh, can be used even in a live scenario you just i think the consideration will come are you using monitors is there going to be feedback you know that kind of consideration little bit has to be there but other than that any of the microphones uh, can be used the ksm 137 141 are actually it's like almost the new generation sm81 so sm81 is quite an old microphone actually the ksm 137 and 141 are the new generation you know pencil condensers so um uh, we have people in india actually using them for uh, choirs there's a choir up in northeast uh and they use six of these microphones for their sunday church program um so it's very very uh, popular lot of applications for these uh, for these microphones um let's see the questions are starting to pour in now again so is there a distributor for sure in bangladesh yes 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 all that will will come up uh we we'll we're very happy in fact to have our friends from bangladesh our friends from nepal in fact yeah. today and sri lanka uh, today so um very very happy to have uh, all of you uh can you use an sm94 on an electric guitar amp yeah you know as long as the electric guitar the sound coming from the amp sounds great you know everything from a 57 to a in fact the ksm313 ribbon microphone um is probably my go to mic uh, not any mine is a go to mic for a lot of people i know dream theater um uh, guns and roses uh, use it on their guitar cabinets the ksm313 it's got a red red diaphragm um okay cool uh, thanks everyone guys and we'll just switch over to Yes so this uh, website and this on uh, this uh, email address is for Pramod's uh, Sound uh, Academy so Sound Ideas Academy is one of the premier academies um, you know in in India they have students actually from all over the world coming here now um, really really made a good name for the institute and the institute is also online at the moment because of the current situation that we are in so this is the email address that you can reach uh, reach them and we are very very grateful for getting the space to use the space because uh, you know it would not we would not be able to do something like this without the actual space so very very grateful for that pramod i'm 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 glad i'm a part of it so here is uh, the uh, phone numbers for and the contacts for uh, the uh, for sun infonet now sun infonet is the distributor for india but uh, uh if you guys send me an email which i will put up next so if you want anything from shaw get in touch with uh, these three gentlemen and they'll kindly direct you on where to go um this is uh, my email address so just send me an email regarding the distributor for bangladesh and i'll send you the contact details for them uh so india@shaw.com and damanya_fali@shaw.com that's me um this is the shore india facebook page so everything that we do goes up um um you know the announcement of the events that we do go up on facebook um so this is the shore india facebook page so if you just type shore india on facebook this page will come up um we'll also let you know when the videos are ready and when we post them on our youtube channel so all that information comes from our india facebook page this is the shore um south asia youtube page so again on google if you just type in shore south asia uh, the south asia youtube page will come up so all our content um, all these videos that we make usually go up uh, on the on this youtube channel we also have a lot of content there in hindi uh, so very soon um, we will have content for microphones and stuff in hindi as well 
This is the learning portal. And just to make that clear, uh, this is the learning portal that you can use for um, a lot of uh, sure courses that are available online. So this is the portal for that. Um, and over here, uh, I'll just remove this photo slightly. There you go. <laughs> okay, so uh, sure sa dash sure dot talent lms dot com. So a lot of our courses and online um, uh, online courses is uh, is available here. Last but not least, uh, thank you very much for joining us. We've had a great session today, and we really hope you have enjoyed uh, it as well. Next week we are going the doing a wind instrument session. Yeah, we'll have Indian flutes and uh, Western uh, 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 instruments like shamraji and we'll have saxophones and. Right. Uh, flutes in the next yeah. session. So let's plan for these sessions. Uh, yeah, uh, sessions you know, you can ahead. always, uh, you have uh, all the email IDs, you can just um, send us an email, what would you like us to cover next and you know, it's something we can take forward we'll till the end of the year because I don't think yeah. we'll be doing live shows for quite a while. So this is just <laughs> one way of us to do a little live uh, live work. So, um, um, Okay, just give me a quick second. And past videos, some um, uh, past yeah, videos past videos are all up on sessions. the all up on the YouTube page. Up till the last one we did last and week. And they'll be yeah, they'll be they soon also, also available on uh, Sound Ideas YouTube page. Uh, yeah. So we'll be also uploading there. So yeah. they are already there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so all yeah, all the sessions, the announcement of the sessions that we're gonna do is done at least four five days in advance. It is on the Sure India Facebook page. On my Facebook page, on Promote Sound Ideas Facebook page, so it's up over there. And then the recording of the session, usually by by Sunday or by Monday morning, it is up on our YouTube uh, YouTube channel. Thank you guys. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Thank you everyone. Pramod. Um, Thank you and we it. will see all you guys. Thanks uh, to Manish next and week. Shruti. Thanks to Manish yeah. and Shruti. Where is Manish? See you guys. Thank you. Thank you. See you guys. And Bye. also, it's time we should we should thank all the sure team. Devraj and everyone is, uh, they also put a lot of effort in this, these sessions. So thank you, Devraj. Thank you. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye.